Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 22 and it's time for another Season 9 2009 game mode, this time with Danny Pedrosa here in Le Mans. The objectives, relatively simple in this one, finish in third place but also distance the fourth position by at least half a second. Now the difficult part of this challenge is that Dovizioso is 4.7 seconds ahead of us on the circuit right now as we speak. Not something I'm too concerned with because we do have eight laps to get this one done. Well, at least seven and a half, I guess, since we started going to Garage Vert and then Sh Shimano Buff. But I'm still very confident in my abilities with this Honda. I do feel pretty good. And this track of Le Mans, love it. So already the gap is down to 3.9 seconds. I can't even see why we can't even get second position. It just depends on where we're going to be. But I will tell you, I did this just earlier on and I realised... When it was too late, the fuel actually decreases in this one. The tyre wear seems to stay the same, but the fuel actually decreases. Most of the challenges I've done so far, the fuel doesn't. It just stays completely as it is. But for some strange reason, this one is the challenge where they decide to add fuel. So be careful when you're doing this one yourself. I just did it earlier. Got all the way up to second position, was pursuing Lorenzo, and unfortunately, it went kaput. But never mind about that. Focusing on the present, lap 22, right here in Le Mans, the gap is down to 3 seconds. I really don't think we're going to need 8 laps. I'm going to use Power Setting 3 as long as I need to, get ahead of Davizioso, and I'll probably just chill it with Power Setting 2. Power Setting 1, I'm still probably quicker than Davizioso, so we'll see how things progress. But going into Garage Vert, sliding the rear tyre there, just using a bit of rear brake just to slow the motorcycle down. So we're now going for the really tight apex for turn 8, and then projectile the Honda out of the corner with a lot of speed and acceleration, but fortunately, the anti wheelie did just kick in ever so slightly there, kicking the front wheel up and also cutting the power. But now into the Shimano buff corner, to the left hand side for turn 9, to the right hand side for turn 10, and we are closing in rapidly on Andrea Davizioso. It's less than two seconds for the first time in this session as we now go to the left hand side for 12. Do feel I can do a little bit better into 12, but honestly, we're charging that quick now, it doesn't even matter if we improve the lap times or not. It's just stay similar to what we've been so far, we're going to dominate this challenge like we have done with the majority of them so far. But across the line, fastest man on circuit, Danny Pedrosa, 132-239. So brilliantly done for the smallest man in MotoGP in 2009. So now into the Dunlop chicane, a strong position here for us as we are really, really bringing on the heat to uh, Andrea Davizioso. It's going to get a bit hot under the collar for that uh, Repsol Honda. Of course, third position is a pretty good job for Dravizioso, but it's not going to happen here. As we go into La Chapelle, the gap has come down to less than 1.5 seconds. It's actually teetering around 1.2 now. So this is going to be the demise of Andrea Dravizioso. Dropped it down to power setting 2 now, because it's not necessary to continue to use power setting 3. I don't believe we can chase down Melandri, because I really don't want to roll, uh, run out of fuel again. So we'll just... Poodle along if we have to, just to make sure that we get Davizioso's third position and then gap him by at least half a second. That part is something I'm not even concerned about. But I will say, I do love this particular game mode. It's the best game mode in MotoGP 22 by far. But look at us going into Shimano Buff now, a little bit deep up on the brakes. But into turn 10 as we get the cutback, we are still very close. We could actually be going into probably... Record them up. Could we go for the lunge before record them up? Possibly. Or I might save it for a wonderful move into the uh, Dunlop chicane. I do ad adore a lunge into the Dunlop chicane. An Air Bassini style on Pekka Banyaya kind of overtake is what I'm referring to. So let's see what can happen. As we now get across the line, is it a good lap? It's not a bad lap. We lost a little bit of time. But Davizioso, Pedroza is going for your position. Is it going to happen here? To the right hand side for the Dunlop chicane. Firm on the brakes will go for the left-hander. Davizioso, oh, he's going to get the cut back. Pedro's a little bit out wide. Couldn't quite get it stuck there. He just wouldn't seem to yield. And unfortunately, I couldn't seem to stop the Honda as well. So uh, unfortunately, we did lose the position. But temporarily getting ahead of Davizioso. Just making him think that we're on the way. Power setting three. Back into the power once more. As we'll try and chase down Davizioso. He's actually put up a bit more of a fight than I assumed, to be quite honest with you. It's a fair play to the teammate of Pedroza. So now into Muse A, coming out to the left hand of a turn 7. We might go, uh, go for a lunge up into Garage Vert. It could be done, and I think it will be done, as Davizioso is going to be pushed while a little bit of contact 
That's for not yielding, Dovi. You really should have let it go, but now we are up into third position with a 10 second gap to Marco Melangio. But look at Vizioso is uh, attempting a move around the outside, but for some reason shut off the power and decided to yield and give us third position without too much of a hitch. So now into turn 10, or at least escaping turn 10 and also escaping Andrea De Vizioso, the challenger in this particular objective. And uh, unfortunately for, for, uh, well, for us all, I guess, De Vizioso is showing no metal. We have beat him, we're disappearing, and De Vizioso will uh, gradually fade into the distance of fourth position. But Marco Melandri is that little bit of a dangling carrot ahead of us. I don't think... I can breach a nine second gap, but you better believe I'm going to try and cut it down to at least half. If you get down to about five seconds, then I'll end the video as a happy man. If not, I guess I'll still end the video as a happy man because I'm generally quite a happy man. But now into turn three and now to the right side for turn four. Beautifully nailed with the Repsol Honda. The Honda certainly is probably the most difficult bike to handle within this particular championship. Maybe the Kawasaki. The Kawasaki gave me a little bit of trouble and I first started using it, but I guess it didn't show in the previous video. You guys seem to really appreciate the overtakes I pulled off in that particular video. We're now coming out to Musée for turn seven. Objectives, green ticks for everyone. Still very solid, and I think the lap times are gonna probably hang around the low 132s. I actually realized that previous lap was a 133.3, so we lost a significant amount of time there, actually. But I guess uh, getting involved with uh, Davizio, so was going to make you lose a little bit of time but look at that gap now ladies and gentlemen a 2.2 second gap to Davizioso crumbled he did absolutely crumbled speaking of crumbled so did we almost making a mess of Shimano buff once again that's a problem when you've got really nothing else to chase and you're just tuning out the lap times kind of uh, get a little bit a little bit lost sometimes I know I do I tend to think about other things maybe a bit of content or maybe this and maybe a thought of that and you lose a little bit of concentration so just be careful if you're going to be going into Shimano Buff a little bit too aggressive or even a little bit too wide. We're now into record not cutting over the rumble strip to start us up for lap 6 of 8. So across the line we went, it's another 133. Not really what I'm looking for, I'm trying to get that lap time further down. Hopefully get it back into the 132s before we end this session. But now to the left hand side, gradually breaking and gently pressing the rear brake just to position ourselves into turn 3 and for turn 4. So Marco Melandri seems to be holding fine. Eight seconds is a mountain to climb for Danny Pedroza within two and a half laps. I don't think it's going to happen. But honestly, I would have been happy to reduce some of the laps in this one because we don't need it. <laughs> we don't need all those extra laps. We've got it. We're good. <laughs> we're fine. So we're going to continue pushing on nonetheless because that's what we do here in this particular channel. And Marco Melandri, 7.5 seconds. I'm still tempted to go absolutely go for it. I've dropped it to power setting 2 and I don't think we're going to need power setting 3, but man, I'd love to have a go at it. I really went for it in the video before this one, but unfortunately, losing fuel on the final lap is when I finally realised that the fuel was dropping. Something I didn't really notice all the way through because most of the time they've never had it reduce, but this time it does, so we're going to get across the line very momentarily. Just a couple more corners to go into the blue S's. For the uh, sixth time of asking, and now to the left hand side for turn 12. Turn 13, turn 14, difficult corners to get right because I usually tend to run it a little bit too wide and cut the line here, especially here for the left hand side where I've just gone across there. In the real life, they don't call that as a track limit, but in the video game, it does, so just be very careful. But back into the 132s once more, a 132.084 for Danny Pedroza. Not quite into the 131s, but I do feel we can certainly get into the 131s. And I think I mentioned this already, but I'm going to mention it again if I haven't. I'm rather fancy a time trial challenge here, ladies and gentlemen. Not entirely sure which bike to use, but I do fancy a time trial challenge here. Of course, you guys seem to enjoy the time trial challenges a lot. That's uh, a lot of times I've said time trial challenge this one, but the TD challenge, let's say, you guys seem to enjoy them, so I'll see what I can produce in the next couple of rounds. I do definitely want to do a uh, Lorenzo, or I think it was Pedroza, as a matter of fact, Sarath mentioned in the comments just recently, Pedroza in Jerez, so stick around for that per perhaps very, very soon. But now into garage for a little bit too wide there for turn 8, but it's not a problem because we'll get the cut back and then begin to fire it on with power setting 3. And something to mention as well, if you are struggling with specific corners and specific tracks, I have some track breakdowns coming very, very soon. Just trying to balance all the content and get it delivered for you as soon as possible. Well, stick around if you want to learn more on specific tracks like Qatar and the rest of them. 
be doing a full breakdown, so stay tuned for that. But now into the left-hand side for turn 12. On the penultimate lap, the gap has come down to 3.8 seconds. Without those minor faux pas earlier on, I do believe we could be right there with Marco Melandri for the second position. So they challenged us to beat Davizioso by 0.5 of a second. We timed it by 10. And we said, it's okay, we'll meet him by 5 seconds. Because that's how we do things. And look at that, a 131.722 for the man on your screens right now. The gap to Melandri down to 3 seconds. This could kick off. <laughs> this could really kick off. I still have plenty of fuel remaining. Marco Melandri seems to be just taking it a little bit steadier now. We could catch him. We could definitely catch the veteran Italian. 2.7 it's going to be as we go into the right hand side or coming out of the right hand side for La Chapelle and now for the hard breaking zone of Muse for the left hand side for turn 7. The gap has dropped even more. 2.4 seconds, 12 point seconds to the uh, to the championship leader at this stage I do believe it was Jorge Lorenzo. We now go firm on the brakes for the garage vert corner. Turn 8, keep it nice and tight, run it a little bit deep then cut it back even tighter. 1.7 seconds. Yeah we definitely could have got Melandri on this one. Definitely, definitely could have done. If Milestone are listening, add a Doctor Ace difficulty to MotoGP 22, I'm begging you, because the AI are just too weak. The gap is down to a second, and we might be setting the fast lap of the Grand Prix once again, as we now go into the Blue S's for the final time of asking. Left-hand side for 12. Could we have a lunge into Melandria to record him on? I don't think it's going to be the smartest of moves, but it is the final lap of the Grand Prix, and the final lap for, of our particular challenge. We are right on the cusp of beating Marco Melandri, but we just won't have the speed getting across the line. But across the line, we will go to dominate another challenge with a fast lap time of a 131.515. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know in the comments section down below. Hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. I will see you for a lot more MotoGP content. Thanks for watching and ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.